We are at Overflow Church here in McGee, Mississippi, um, as I always say, under the water tank. And um, one of the things that I wanted to talk to Paul about, because I remember when Overflow Church started, and um, I remember that our church made a contribution to, to help this church to start. And it was, a, it was something I didn't even understand. I, I really did not understand what they were or who they were going to be churching or trying to church or whatever. And I don't think very many people in the town did understand it. I feel like they, they thought it was a place where drug, drug heads went, you know, who knows. But it has been such a blessing to me to watch the growth of this church. But I wanted Paul to tell you a little bit about what this church is about. Well, when, when we started this church, and, and it was because of gifts from churches that you came from and other churches and pastors. I mean, those pastors wrapped me up because I didn't have anybody uh, mm -hmm. at the time. Um, Brother Buddy Keys just, I mean, he's like a father to me in the ministry, really, really was. And, and, so many others that, that wrapped me up and, and when we first started because there wasn't a model for what we did we didn't know how to do it and mm -hmm. so we began to just reach out to, to this culture and this culture began to invite you know that culture but that was not the original the original vision of overflow church was all unchurched people mm -hmm. all unchurched not a class not a culture gotcha. and, and the original picture was a suit and tie guy beside the tattoo guy worshiping together and that's what god showed me in the beginning but in the beginning of this ministry it got to where i could see that all i saw was the tattoo guy and he was out there and 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 you know there was uh we we spent uh, thousands and thousands of dollars putting people in treatment centers and and we began to be known for that people would line up for us to help them put their lights back on and you know, poverty level people and as we began to grow and get more formed, especially since we've been in the new building, and that our, our church has evolved into two things. In the beginning, our vision was to reach lost people, reach people that were not believers, that were unchurched, and show them that the church does love them, um, and to give, them, give us an avenue to do that. The next part of our vision grew as we grew, and that was a holistic discipleship. Um, and what I mean when I say holistic discipleship is when most people think of the word disciple or discipleship, you think of Sunday school, discipleship training, and basically it's knowledge and wisdom of the Bible and, and what the Bible says about this and theology and doctrine, and that's all good, and we teach that here. But we also teach money management. We teach how to dress. We teach how to parent your kids. We teach as a part of what we call holistic. These people are coming out of a culture of instability we are trying to create stability in it's very practical ways because of that now we have doctors they come to this church we have um, successful business owners uh, physical therapists we actually now for the first time in the last six months are actually seeing the successful person walking beside the person that has not been and discipling them and when I mean discipling, then I'm talking about all of life. And it's so neat to see that. I'll give you an example. We have a little girl in our church that's learning her numbers. Um, and we're so excited that she's learning her numbers. Um, but one of the things that she has is a Sharpie. And she writes her numbers all over the church. Uh, we've got a seven on the water fountain. Um, the bar in the kitchen, there's an eight. Um, but one of the things that we do is that we have people walk with her and say, hey, let's get that Sharpie out of her hand. And we talk to the mom about, let's, this is what respect looks like. Mm -hmm. and this is how you respect things. And, you know, but nobody's making a big deal about it. Nobody's causing a fuss about it because it's just a water fountain, mm -hmm. you know, in the bigger picture. But at the same time, we're taking opportunities like that to say, we want to teach you how to manage your money. We want to teach you that it's not okay to quit a job if you don't have a job. We want to teach you it's not okay to live on the government. We want to teach you that it's not okay for you to have other people assist you all your life. We want to show you that you can feel good about yourself because God's given all of us the wisdom to do that. And we also teach that, you know, about Christ and about His love and grace and mercy and theology. But there's also that part of Christ that we teach to say, you know what, there's, there's more to life than what you've been taught. You know, and there's so many people that their parents have raised them this way. Mm -hmm. And we're breaking that cycle. 
um, and we're trying our best to say, okay, you, your, your family starts here. And, and teaching someone how to be a husband is one of the most difficult things ever because you don't, we don't get them at children. We get them at 35 and 40 years old when they've learned 40 years worth of experience so that when we get them, we spend a lot of time teaching somebody how to be a husband, teaching somebody how to be um, a, a wife. As a matter of fact, we, I have certain people, certain couples in my church, so I say, that's how you do it, okay? And I'll say, I want you guys to walk with you guys Why? because they know how to do it. You go do that. And it's just, it's been phenomenal. Um, I had a woman that came to me that was on drugs. She used to um, prostitute herself for drugs. And awful situation, awful situation. She called me about three days, ago, uh, about three weeks ago, and she said, "I need to talk to you. I've got a problem." She left me a voicemail, and I called her back. And when she has a problem, she got a it's problem. It's bad. Um, her problem is this: she needs to think about her future and where to invest her money. That is totally out of character. For her culture it's working these people are being discipled they're making wise decisions in life they're actually giving back to the community one of the things about this building that we said in the beginning is we don't need another church building mm -hmm. we want the center of a community eventually our vision is for this to be a ministry mall when you come here there's after school tutoring there's a, a um, free medical clinic. There is a place for addicts like NA and AA that meet here. Christian Women Job Corps is now permanently here. Uh, praise God for that. Um, also, like Crisis Pregnancy Center, all these different organizations that minister to the community, we want them to be here rent-free, never charge them a dime to stay here, and this will be a place where the community comes for refuge and that we're helping the community. We're not creating a place for Christians to socialize. We're actually impacting the community in a real way. Uh, NA meets here now three nights a week and we love that because we are showing the community that we want to help the community we're not just about a bunch of people in a holy huddle that if we're not doing something in the community we're worthless there's no point in us um, but we're also abroad I mean and you, you, you've shown on, on mcgeenews.com before all the Kenya stuff that we do and how we're over in Africa all of the time and um, it's just so wonderful. We have a new members class coming up of people that's joined our church. And there's 42 people in it. Really? It's I just think it's that's crazy. So interesting though, because you know, so often in churches, we are we're just set into a certain way. You go to Sunday school. You may go to GAs. You may go to choir. You know this type of thing. But helping people to me is really about helping that person. And so often they're not. How do you get this message? to the community. I mean, how, how we can, I know, through the news, whatever. What are ways that we as individuals can help get this message to the community? The, the Bible says that faith without works is dead. Okay, And what we're seeing in many cases is that because we have been taught all our lives that we are to be with our culture. And that's me, okay? I've never had a drug problem. <laughs> Um, I always tell people I had a drug problem growing up. I was drugged to church every Sunday morning. I've never had a drug problem. I've never had an alcohol problem. Um, I was basically a good kid, a very religious kid. And what my mom taught me is don't ever go to jail. Don't ever do this. Don't ever do that. Don't ever hang with this person. Don't ever hang with that person. And so what I learned to do was separate myself from a culture that needs Christ and say I feel really comfortable in this culture. I like the people that are like me. That's normal. It's human nature. Mm -hmm. But Jesus says this, I'm giving you the power to love your enemy. That's not easy. To bless those that come against you. To bless them that persecute you. And all he's asking us, you can find a middle place there and help somebody that needs it. The Good Samaritan. I mean, how awesome is that to say that's where it's at? You say this guy's not even a part of your culture. He's a Samaritan. Why in the world would he do that? Jesus said that if somebody asked you for your shirt, give them your coat as well.